Yo, man, you hear about your bull? Who my bull? Kells. Yeah, man. Yeah, man. My I'm mom's like, telling me no. I think that, uh, <laughs> I think I'm just at a place where, like, uh, I'm just feeling like, Lifetime trying to fuck Kells over. Like, I, I don't know what's this infatuation with ruining the career of R. Kelly, but they doing a good job of it, man. And Ru- uh, I mean, all they, they're just stating facts. You can, are you ruining someone's career just because you're stating facts? But I think when you state the facts, you gotta state all the facts. You, get, you, you bringing up people, like, first of all, let me just be all the way clear. Like, R. Kelly transgressing with 13, 14 year old girls. I will never condone or co-sign that bullshit. You know what I'm saying? Okay. But what I will say is, you know, when they start releasing the facts, like, how did he get a hold of these 13, 14 year old girls? Like the young girl that he that, that he pissed on. You know what I mean? Well, I that's think the his, uh, niece. His that, bring him through. That's the niece of one of the same people who's on the Lifetime show talking bad about Kells. How did he get a hold of your niece? I know how he got a hold of your niece. You sent her to slaughter. How yeah, come, I mean, how, but that doesn't make what he did any better. No, it don't make it did what he be, any better. But people are accomplices to this. So it's almost so to me, it's like they was your co-defender and then they stood up and got a separate lawyer. And now they pointing the finger at you saying that you guilty. But they was a part of the fuckery. You know what I'm saying? All, the, all, all these young ladies, 21, 22 years old coming from poverty stricken backgrounds, desolate, destitute, the well, poor I'm not, I'm conditions. Not even, I'm not even thinking about the 21s and the 22 I, year olds. Yeah. They said when he was first coming up, uh-huh. he was going hanging out at the high school. Okay. Hanging out at the McDonald's across from the high school. Okay. Pulling up in his nice little uh, expedition. Okay. Popping out like All right. Mark Kelly. All right. And did his whole Pod Piper shit. I'm gonna be quite honest, just a little bit I'm desensitized to that because I remember being a freshman in high school and you walking up the way and 24, 25 year old men was pulling up on high school sophomore chicks, high school junior chicks and pulling them. And we didn't didn't think that shit was right then. I mean, we didn't think it was right from a selfish standpoint. Like, damn, bro, (laughs) I wanted to fuck her. How can I compete? Like you got this car with all these rims and all this money. And all I could give her is my time and laughter. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Buy a little candy bar at the we, You know what I'm saying? Machine. We ain't really give a fuck about it to the point where like, yo, somebody should drop a dime on that nigga B. You know what I mean? I don't like that shit. I don't, <laughs> I don't like, like that shit. shit. You know what I'm saying? I'm drop dime on them niggas. No, no, nobody felt like that. The chick's parent, the chick parent was with the shit. She met the dude. No goddamn well, this dude was 25 years old, but he had a car with rims and was buying her sneakers and getting her hair done. And the mother was co-signing the shit. So I mean, the shit that the shit that messed me up about this now is that it was the norm. Parents was cool with it. You know, it was school officials who knew shit like this. Like, it, like I remember being in high school, going to a prom. Twenty-seven-year-old nigga was in the prom with his seventeen-year-old date. School officials knew that he graduated six years before this prom. Nobody, nobody, mandated reporters. Nobody called who they were supposed to call. None, no, no, nothing went down to hold this man accountable. But now, all of a sudden. R. Kelly is like the poster child for this shit. Like, I, you know. I mean, that's what happens. What they, what they say, the uh, roosters come home to, what's the, what's the saying? Man, f- <laughs> I, man, chickens come home to chickens roost. Chickens come home to roost. I'm being always real, man. That shit, I mean, look, you put that shit out there, sooner or later that shit catches I up. I feel like there. a lot of this shit is just based around money. Like, somehow or another, somebody tried that. This, my, this is the Barksdale. Y'all, you know, make sure y'all put this on the screen. This is, in quotations, the Barksdale conspiracy theory. Yeah, T, put that shit up there, because he's always putting up fucking throwbacks of Michael Wakanda's shirt and yeah. shit like that. This is what I really think. I think that somebody tried to extort R. Kelly for some monies. R. Kelly was like, fuck you, suck my dick. And they went through these measures to ruin R. Kelly because R. Kelly did not comply with the extortion. It's, it's funny because I only watched the first episode of the Lifetime documentary, mm-hmm. but his brother's the most vocal one. 
Judas motherfucking Cain and Abel. My thing is, why, why didn't you say anything while he was actually- While it was happening. When y'all motherfuckers saw him take that 14 year old girl into his fucking sin den, you know what I mean, his sin shed, and do all that bullshit to her, why y'all didn't call the cops then? Cause okay. I'ma keep it real, you my man Gus, and in another life if I saw you take a 14 year old girl into your fucking den of shame, <laughs> I'ma fuck you up and get her out of there. Well, it's funny because uh, they actually had one of the backup singers on there. Yeah. She was giving a, uh, a story about they were all on a tour bus and, you know, they got the bunks and everything. They, you know, they got the little bunks they sleep in. And then, you know, the back room is for, I guess, R. Kelly. Mm -hmm. So at one time they was playing some pranks or some shit and the door flew open and uh, he was in there knocking the Leah off. And, uh, well, I guess you call raping the Leah. So, uh, the problem I have with the story is the chick's telling the story now, but when it happened, this you did bus full nothing. of people didn't do anything. You did nothing. So now if we talking all this shit in retrospect, like the, the roosters coming home to roost or whatever the <laughs> fuck that statement is. Chickens come home to roost. Just remember this shit. When Sandusky went down for raping, so did everybody who turned the blind eye to it. So all you motherfuckers that was on that bus that saying R. Kelly was raping his wife, how crazy does that sound? I think that was before him. At the end of the day, the parents allowed him to marry her. No, actually, the dude that actually, uh, I don't know, I think it was like one of his road managers or whatever, actually lied on, the parents weren't there. So. And they lied on the marriage certificate saying that she was actually 18. Who lied on the marriage certificate? Uh, the road manager forged documents. I, th I think that's a court. lie. I think that's a lie. I think the parents were well knowledgeable that R. Kelly was marrying their daughter. I think they were well knowledgeable. Well, even if they did, they didn't make none of the shit right. I mean, but it's more people held accountable. Well, I mean, on, I, man. I agree everybody should be held accountable. That's what I'm saying. So we ain't going to just go at the Pied Piper without going at all his minions that helped it happen. I, that, that's just how I feel. You know what I'm saying? And if you're going to go at R. Kelly, God damn it, y'all better dig up Hugh Hefner and lock his ass up too. Fuck that. How many underage girls was Hugh Hefner getting dick sucks from? How many underage girls he had living in the Playboy Mansion, feeding them zannies and coke so they could fuck at the, at the Playboy parties? And he, been doing, about and he been doing that shit since 1960. Nah, but I'm talking about it because you about the, you, they, they are tarnishing the image again using our own people again to tarnish the image of one of our musical legends. Meanwhile, the godfather of pornography been fucking 13 and 14 year old girls since the dumbass magazine came I mean, out. But just cause them over there allow that shit to happen in their community don't mean we gotta let this shit happen in Bro, our community. Don't make that shit right. He's being held by the laws. He's being held to the laws created by them over there but, but them then, are in power, so that's what happens. So, so this is what I'm saying. So, people, what I'm saying, it's a double standard. Why isn't Hugh Hefner held to the same laws? Because he's one of them. So, why are we going against our own? Because he's still a nasty motherfucker. Bro, you sound like them dumbass motherfuckers, bro. So, I'm supposed to let him go? Be like, ah, it's cool. Well, no, what I'm, supposed, what I'm saying is, you a father. If your daughter was ever in a situation with R. Kelly like that, before you call the cops, we ain't gonna talk about what you're gonna do. We just gonna say calling the calling mm -hmm. the police is <laughs> the last resort. Mm -hmm. So if you feel like R. Kelly wronged your family, oh yeah, everybody in the studio that was there. That's what I'm saying. On the bus that's that what was I'm there. saying. Motherfuckers threw them kids out to dry. If if, if it was more than one 14 year old girl, those parents hung those kids out to dry. R. Kelly paid all those settlement monies, and now y'all on Lifetime talking crazy about him. When you could have had him, and they getting more money. You could have had him locked up in 1993 when it happened. Now you're gonna wait till 2023 to, 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 to get a, to have some heart. Man, get the fuck out of here, man. Well, they, fuck they didn't say anything back then because of the money. Because now they, they saying it now. Because but, for but, the but, money. But <laughs> fuck them, fuck them. He's still a nasty nigga. Okay. Do something when it happened. Can't call a nigga a bitch after he knock you out. You can. 
but he knocked you out. You can still call him a bitch. It won't, it won't hold no weight. And that's, and that's what I'm saying right now. It don't hold no weight. You can't call him a nasty nigga 20 years after he paid you for fucking your child. Now, Look I, how I crazy do, that sounds. I do feel bad buying that the... Look that how, best of both worlds bro, bootleg. look how crazy that sound you are calling him a nasty nigga 20 years after he fucked your child he paid you for fucking your child that's not i know i know you as in general but don't point at me and say you yeah, hey bro i mean you on their side I'm, I, I'm not on r kelly's side i'm just on the side of true justice true justice you should have fucked r kelly up in 1996. If you gonna wait till 2016, he ain't got no hit records now. He got him. I mean, they all hit records. He's still records. fucking filthy rich. Yeah. yeah. At the end of the day, fuck all those chicks that's complaining about R. Kelly. You should have complained in the 90s when it happened. Right now, clean your pussy, take a shower, get a job. Man, fuck R. Kelly. <laughs>